All right, guys, so in this video, uh, video number six of the GI, uh, we're going to talk about the really difference between uh, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And there's a couple learning points. It's kind of a short video. Uh, there's two questions, but they're both really, uh, there are two concepts that I can uh, pretty much definitely see how this would um, almost certainly be on your step one exam. So hope you like the video. Okay guys, so this question reads, a 30-year-old female presents with a 14-month history of occasional diarrhea. She, she, also, she has also had complaints of abdominal pain. There is a reported history of ulcerative colitis. Which of the following be characteristic of ulcerative colitis in this patient? All right, so this is just a strict, do you understand the principles of ulcerative colitis? And really where they're gonna test you on this is you gotta differentiate between um, Crohn's disease as well as ulcerative colitis. And, you know, honestly, I, I go back to this, but Pathoma, if you want to take a deep dive into this, uh, he does a really good, nice job differentiating between these two. But let's, let's try our best uh, based on what we know. So with Crohn's, i got to watch myself on this to make sure I don't spell it wrong. So we have Crohn's, and then we have ulcerative colitis. All right. Now... Signs and symptoms of both. Well, abdominal pain, you're gonna get in both. Diarrhea, both. Weight loss can be in both. And they say fever. So just having these type of symptoms alone doesn't really differentiate between the two because uh, obviously they can be in both. So you, you gotta understand a little bit more of the, of the pathology behind Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And if we really, now I say, if you went back to all the, the GI uh, videos, you know, I'd say you draw the esophagus, you know, you draw the stomach, per se, and this is just my attempt at it. And then, of course, you have the, um, you know, intestines, I don't, I'm not sure the best way to draw this. But anyways, you kind of get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. And then an ulcerative colitis, I want you to do the same thing. Because again, remember what we said, this is kind of, you want to make sure that you can tell a story with this if you were going to teach it to the next guy. So again, there's the stomach and up. So then the question becomes, where, does, where do these occur? Now, in Crohn's, you know, you can have it kind of anywhere from you know up in the mouth region all the way down to the very bottom okay and it can be anywhere for the most part in here now there's a couple spots that it really likes to um, hit and the one that I want you to re really focus in on is called the terminal ilium so it can be anywhere between the mouth uh, to the bottom uh, but it's mainly in these kind of little little uh, patchy areas per se and I should think like that. But the one that you really need to know is going to be the, the terminal ilium because there's a point to be made about the, because that's where bile absorption occurs. And if you got an issue in that, then it, you'll, you'll see here in a second how that's affected. Now, when it comes to ulcerative colitis, we should essentially be thinking, you know, the, uh, the bowel, okay? It's mainly the bowel. So again, Crohn's can be anywhere through here. When it comes to ulcerative colitis, you know, you got to think at the, the lower end, uh, the bowel. Now, if we were to take a cross section, you know, if we were to take a cross section of the bowel on these, this is where you'd really kind of drive home the point of do you, do you understand these? Um, so again, this is just a cross section of the bowel. Now, with Crohn's, they call it transmural, okay? Trans, uh, tran transmural mural inf inflammation. Trans means across. So it's across the whole thing from the, from the you know, tip of the inside, per se, in the bowel, all the way to the edge. And that's real important. Because if you have that, what, what happens? Then this can cause um, uh, strictures. Okay, it can cause perforations. I mean, think about that. If it goes from here to here, it can kind of perforate, uh, go through uh, the bowel, you know, kind of create that hole. 
it can create uh, fistulas, right? Fistula is like a connection between between two areas, uh, so it can it can uh, make that. And just remember that stricture is basically I should remind them that's just a narrowing. Okay, it's more of an, a a narrowing of the bowel, and it's also associated with that word cobblestone appearance. And notice how most of these things are over in Crohn's. Okay. Not so much over on the ulcerative colitis, or mainly in the Crohn's, has all these transmural strictures, narrowing perforations, fistulas, cobblestone appearance. And the mechanism behind that, as they say, you know, if it goes transmural all the way across, it's these good pieces will kind of uh, overlap, and that gives you that little um, uh, cobblestone, perhaps, appearance. Okay? Um, and it's also associated with, that, with the term non caseating. Uh, granuloma. And really what that is, as they say, body, it's trying to wall off something. Okay? Something it doesn't like. It's going to wall it off. Uh, so, again, you'll get a non-caseating granuloma. So all these key terms associated with Crohn's, non-caseating gran non granuloma, transmural inflammation, strictures, perforations, fistulas, cobblestone appearance. Okay? Where? It could be anywhere from you know tip to tip, but where's the one that I want you to know? I want you to know terminal ileum. Why? Because there's an issue with the bile absorption, and there's the questions they ask on that. Now, over to ulcerative colitis, we said it's here, you know, down in the bowel, but if we took a look at the bowel, is it all the way down? No, it's only going to be at the tips, and so it's almost like it's a right here, and so if it's always at the tips, pretty much all the way through the bowel, that's why they call it a continuous mucosal involvement. Okay, so continuous mucosal involvement. And that is uh, associated with toxic megacolon. Okay? So anyway, to toxic me megacolon. So, uh, you know, decreased blood pressure, um, you know, shock. So, and you got to think, this, the, this can affect the blood vessels, right? The blood vessels in here, and that's why you're really going to get the, uh, well, I should say bloody diarrhea, yeah, bloody diarrhea, okay? So they both have diarrhea, this one's more, more likely to produce the bloody diarrhea, okay? So that's how you're going to know between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. They both have the same symptoms, abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, fever. But if you know the mechanism where they're at, Crohn's, from tip to tip, mainly in the terminal ileums, where you're going to remember it, it goes transmural, which creates the cobblestone, okay, which can create the strictures, the narrowing, and it can create the perf perforated bowel, perforations, fistulas, which are connections, um, and then non-caseating granuloma. For ulcerative colitis, think it's bloody diarrhea, but it's continual mucosal involvement associated with toxic megacolon. Now, back to this question. Which of the following would be characteristic of ulcerative colitis? Is it A, continuous involvement of the mucosal lining? Looks good. Transmural inflammation? No, we said that was Crohn's. Non-caseating granuloma? Nope, Crohn's. Skip lesions? Well, think about that. If, it, if it's here, and then it's here, and then it's here, you can see how it skips, skips, skips. So skip lesion is going to be with Crohn's, not ulcerative colitis. Oh, and I forgot, and it's my fault. I should have put this in a rectal, rectal skin tag. They were just going to add that one to old Crohn's, okay? You, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't have known that unless I wrote it in. Rectal skin tag. That's small player, but anyways, associated with Crohn's. The one that was obvious, the continuous involvement of the mucosal lining, go A with ulcerative colitis. Even on step one, say you didn't even know that. Say you didn't write that rectal skin tag down. The fact is, don't let that be a distractor, because on step one, there's going to be answer choices where you're like, man, where did they dream that up at? Um, and don't, don't buy into it, okay? If you know one for certain, obviously the best one, I would stick with that. And then in this choice would be continuous mucosal and lining, uh, ulcerative colitis. Now, this one. What is the mechanism that causes these kidney stones? Okay, good. A 40-year-old male with reported history of Crohn's, okay, well, I'm, in my mind, I'm already, I'm already thinking what we just talked about. It could be from tip to tip, and um, 
you know, transmural inflammation, fistulas, all that kind of good stuff. There's evidence of additional renal stones. What is the mechanism for the cause of these kidney stones? So the key is they want to ask, do you know the mechanism between Crohn's and kidney stones and what kind? Is it A, increased calcium absorption? Is it B, increased absorption of fats? Is it C, impaired binding of oxalate? Or is it D, higher binding affinity of calcium oxalate compared to calcium fats? All right, so here's, this is probably the most important part of this, of this video is let's learn what normal is and then let's learn how Crohn's messes, messes with this, okay? So we're in Crohn's. Where did I say that you need to understand about Crohn's? Okay, so I just think we're in the bowel, okay? Where did I say you need to be? You need to be, you, in, you need to understand the terminal ileum, okay? Now, normally there's four players that you need to know. Calcium, we're gonna put him right there. The bile, okay? Uh, fats, and oxalate, okay? This is normal, okay? We're in the terminal ileum. This, this guy is normal. So what happens? Well, what normally happens is when the bile, when bile gets to the terminal ileum, he likes, or she likes, to combine with fats and get reabsorbed, okay? They're gonna get reabsorbed. To where? Well, it's gonna get reabsorbed and it's gonna go to the liver um, and get recycled, okay? So bile with fats, go to the liver, um, and then what happens to calcium and oxalate? Well, they, you know, they, no one likes to be alone, right? So they're gonna kind of uh, get together, uh, per se, and then, you know, they're actually gonna go out into the feces. All right, so that's what happens normal. Now, maybe there's a little, there's a little mixture, a little bit goes in here, you know, there's, there's also some nutrients that kind of get reabsorbed, maybe even some calcium. Um, but at the end of the day, your main point here is normally in the terminal ileum, someone who's normal, bile gets reabsorbed with fats, have a good, have a, they have a good affinity there, and then calcium combines with oxalate and goes out into the uh, feces, okay? Or down the bowel, you know, down, you know, a little bit further down the pipe. Now, let's take that same scenario and say, well, what happens in the terminal ileum terminal ileum with Crohn's, okay? And this person's got Crohn's. I got my same players, right? I got calcium, I got bile, I got oxalate, and I got fats. So number one, in Crohn's, say I got issues, right? I got issues right there. So guess, guess who's not gonna get who is not going to get reabsorbed? Who gets ticked, ticked that they can't get reabsorbed? Bile. So bile says, man, if I, if I can't get reabsorbed, I'm not hanging out with anybody. I'm just going to head on down this way. Okay, so he gets pushed on out. So what happens to the fats? Fats are like, look, man, I should, I should be reabsorbed, but I can't now because bile doesn't, it's not going to. So, so what's going to happen to the fats? They got to pair up with somebody. So what are they going to do? they're gonna pair up with the calcium. And when they pair up with the calcium, because there's a higher, a higher affinity there, they are also gonna head on down the pipe and, and head on out. So who's left over? Who's left over with no one to go, you know, to, to go down the pipe with? Oxalate. So what's gonna to happen to oxalate? They get reabs, you know, reabsorbed too much, right? A lot more than they should. And so what kind of kidney stones happen in Crohn's? Because get, who gets reabsorbed back into it? Oxalate, okay? You gotta know that mechanism. Here's normal, here's what happens in Crohn's. Oxalate gets reabsorbed back in and that can create what kind of stone? Oxalate, oxalate kidney stones. So back to this one, what is the mechanism for the cause of the kidney stones? Is it increased absorption of calcium in Crohn's? Well, wait a second, calcium never got really reabsorbed in this terminal ileum deal, so it's not that one. Is it increased absorption of fats? Well, fats normally go in, but in Crohn's, they didn't go in, so it's not increased absorption of fats. Is it impaired binding of oxalate? Well, usually oxalate binds to calcium, but in this scenario, fat took its place, so that one's a possibility. 
Is it a higher binding affinity of calcium oxalate compared to calcium fats? So they're saying is it a higher affinity of calcium oxalate? No, actually there's a higher affinity for calcium in the fats than there was to calcium and oxalate, so it's not that guy. The correct answer, C, impaired binding of oxalate, okay? That's the mechanism that you have to understand in Crohn's uh, when it comes to the kidney stones, what type and what's behind it. This is, the, this is a really good, really good step one uh, level question, okay? Hope you like the video.